Wow, look at the size of this thing. Hey guys, welcome to the channel and to this inbox review of the new 172 scale Wigan uh, duo pack from Special Hobby. This is a big box and uh, it contains two kits and it also contains a book with uh, reference photos and some background information about the uh, Wigan family of aircrafts. So, if we start looking at the box art, it shows the two uh, individuals or uh, the two types that are included in this kit, the AJ37 and the SK37. The first one is the, actually the first uh, version of Wigan that came into service, that is uh, the Strike aircraft version. And the SK is the trainer. And uh, that uh, explains why where there are uh, um, two cockpits in that aircraft. Uh, okay, so um, if we look at the side here, um, as you can see, this is um, uh, kit number SH seventy two four eleven, and it is. Uh, plastic model kit in a limited edition so I assume that this will will only be released in uh, in one um, one production lot uh, so uh, if you are interested in getting uh, getting hold of this kit I recommend that you try to grab one as quick as possible okay so without further ado let's open up the box Right, uh, first we have some kind of uh, carton bracket with some marketing material from Special Hobby. And we also have the decal sheet uh, made by Cartograph. So the de decaling should be uh, pretty hassle free because that is a good brand. Uh, we have the Assembly instructions, one for each aircraft, which I think is a good idea because uh, with all the different uh, mounting options for the different aircraft, I think if you've collected everything together in one um, assembly instruction, it should be, it could be pretty um, confusing. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay, so um, we have two bags with uh, with the sprues with the plastic part. Um, there are no marking, which one is which, which I think uh, <laughs> they could have done, but uh, we will figure that out when we start uh, start digging into the um, the sprues and looking closer th at them. Um, it's the same packaging uh, method as for the Tarangus uh, 172 scale. Everything together in one big bag, resealable bag. And the clear parts are, thank God, in a separate bag. Okay, we also have a small pamphlet or information. Um, some kind of notice about the publications and other publications that are, that are available from uh, from that uh, author. And finally, we have uh, the book. And I will look. Uh, we will look closer at this when we come to that section in the review. Okay, so that's uh, that's everything that is in the box. Okay, let's start with the trainer version because I'm very curious how they have solved the uh, dual cockpit uh, layout. So, as I said before, this is the same packaging method as the Tarangus used. One single uh, 
um, bag with everything, uh, resealable though. Uh, and in the Tarangus kit I had uh, some issues with a pitot tube that was bent and I can see that this one has um, is okay so uh, that was probably a, a fault on on my behalf okay so let's uh, start looking at the sprue trees one by one okay uh, this is familiar um, it's the same exactly the same layout as for the um, uh, the fighter version uh, but in this case I don't think these are used because they are only on the on the fighter the other parts are uh, common for both um, for both uh, individuals and uh, everything looks really nice as expected yeah and here we have the upper front part of the fuselage with uh, with a double or dual uh, cockpits and it looks really nice it looks a little bit crammed to uh, to get to fit both uh, <laughs> cockpit tubs but I I guess it's it's doable or uh, this is interesting. I guess these are the um, periscopes that are on front of the, on top of the um, fuselage between the the um, uh, the trainer um, and the the pilot or the the pupil. Okay, looks nice. And we have the, this one is uh, obviously not used for this kit. And we have a number of small parts for the um, landing gear, landing gear bay doors. And we ha have the thrust reverser. Um, the first stage of the compressor uh, we have the, um, the burner can with the exhausts and uh, one part of the afterburner the other part of the afterburner is actually included in the the rear end so to speak or or the A8 section that it's called according to Saab uh, this is the um, the rear part of the of the afterburner. Okay, let's move on. And we have, I think we we will probably use the two identical ones. The, these I, I'm only guessing here, but uh, that makes sense. <laughs> I think uh, we have uh, those are. I don't think they are used on the trainer. These are uh, rails for uh, for uh, on the fuselage for uh, missiles. And we have the uh, we don't have a gun pod on on this uh, version, so it will be have a center line rail here for the um, for the um, drop tank, a center line drop tank, and I think it's these that are used. And we have the rear part of the 
of the um, air intake funnels these guys so this one will fit right here and let's see if we have yeah okay because uh, the the SK and the AJ version they they don't have a length or uh, they, they have the short fuselage which means that you should use this one uh, for for the fighter version the JA you should have the one that has actually has a part of the fuselage engraved on the side here but this one is smaller and it fits sort of inside the, the fuselage but I see that I have not included uh, the other one because it's it's not needed so so there is no confusion on on that okay so we have the upper side of the wings and for the trainer version we have this uh, higher uh, tail fin uh, the same as that is used on on the on the fighter version and we have the nose cone and the air intakes and everything looks just like on the um, on the tarangus kit you have this uh, this these are really nice the integrated uh, landing gear, main landing gear base um, if you want you can detail them a little bit maybe add some wires and, and stuff but uh, because the on the uh, on the real aircraft this is this area is quite busy but the, on the other hand you don't see much of it when uh, when the aircraft is on the ground uh, because they are Normally they are almost covered by by the landing gear doors, so uh, it is kind of waste of energy to uh, <laughs> to detail that too much, I guess. But uh, some people like me, we don't uh, care about that. We uh, detail stuff anyway, even if uh, it's not possible to see when the model is finished. Okay, so here is also uh, this one is common with um, with the fighter version with some parts for uh, these are fins for the drop tanks. We have some ejection seat rails that go to, goes on the back of the ejection seat. We have the ejection seats, of course, here. And the uh, center IPs, instrument panels. Uh, and we have a couple of uh, air scoops here. I don't know if these are used on the SK or not. Um, wheels, they look uh, quite okay. There are actually wheels, uh, aftermarket resin uh, wheels available from CMK. Uh, they also have uh, a really nice pilot uh, and uh, instructor um, and, and a ladder so you can make a small vignette with uh, with the SK uh, uh, I think the instructor is sitting in the aircraft and the pilot you can pose him on on the way up on, on the ladder if I if I remember correctly. Okay. And we have the um, underside of the wing and the canals. And the, um, the rat or the ram air turbine. Um, and the air brakes. <clears throat> One um, thing about the air brakes, they um, they actually fit quite bad into because they are uh, these guys here. They 
should fit into uh, here. Uh, the problem is that this part is a little bit too small, so uh, it will produce a very large uh, seam or gap uh, that doesn't look like uh, the real aircraft. It's not a problem if you post uh, air brakes uh, extended, but uh, on Wiggins that you basically only extended them when they were used, so normally if they are craft is, uh, is in the air and not breaking, they should be uh, retracted and on the ground they should always, always be retracted. So uh, a bit of warning for that. I, I will show you, I have actually built the fighter version uh, already and uh, so I can uh, at the end of the review I will show you the how that looks and point out some a couple of uh, caveats with the uh, with the build. Another thing that I experienced was that the, these are very very brittle or very small, very tiny, so it's easy to destroy them when you cut them from the from the sprue. So be very careful when you when you cut those. I would I think I would recommend to use when you cut the first one use a resin saw or something so you have a sort of you don't you're not uh, putting a lot of strain on the on the part when you when you cut it or be very careful okay so that was the um, the main plastic parts uh, for the trainer version and the clear parts they uh, you will actually use uh, all of these canopies and this is a small uh, window that is um, at the rear uh, uh, cockpit and this is the windscreen and uh, yeah the, the clear parts look okay I think I haven't seen any issues with them uh, for the fighter version, so uh, I expect that they will be also good on, on this kit. Okay, let's continue by looking at the assembly instructions for the trainer version. Uh, on the front page there are some information. Um, there are some history about the aircraft. Uh, this version. The interesting thing this is, I think this, uh, some of the two-seat airframes were converted to SK-37E electronic warfare trainers. Um, and uh, let's hope that uh, Triangus or, or uh, Special Hobby makes uh, this version as well, the Störvigen. That would be really cool. And uh, okay, so let's uh, look at uh, the first um, um, fold out here. Um, there are sprue call out with uh, some crossed over parts. Th those are the parts that are not uh, used in this particular uh, version, of course. There are some information about. Uh, the paints, the paint call out and I see that they have, uh, I don't know if this is normal for a special hobby or, or if it's just for this kit but they have actually done it uh, the, the Revell way, they are uh, sort of using a legend for, for each uh, um, paint and so you have to keep this conversion table in front of you um, uh, when you are building, if there are parts that are uh, inside the, the the assembly phase that needs to be painted. Uh, I'm not so fond of this, I think this is, is very confusing and uh, it's also, especially if there are many different uh, paints on one part, we have to keep track of all the 
all the legions or uh, um, letters and also the paint numbers. So uh, I prefer it the way that, uh, for example, Tamiya does. In their, they have the paints marked out uh, with uh, with their paint uh, callout, of course. Okay, uh, never mind. Let's move on. Uh, on the other hand, they have uh, the instructions seems a little bit more uh, what I would say detailed or, or easy to follow with uh, with the sort of areas with different paints that they have actually marked them so they, they have sort of used the full uh, color uh, assembly instructions uh, which is good um, the assembly seems pretty easy you make two two cockpit tubs uh, one of each type they look pretty similar, I think. And you um, put different IPs, of course, on them. Um, yeah, so that seems pretty straightforward, I would say. Okay, there are you need to do some filling. I'm not sure I understand that, but I uh, <laughs> I would <laughs> probably figure that out. Uh, are the, are you supposed to fill an outline, or or is it just the area that needs to be filled? I don't know. Anyway, uh, le let's not get stuck with that. Uh, it's uh, it's probably the panel lines that need to be filled, I guess. Okay, so if you want to have the rat or the ram air turbine uh, shown, uh, I guess if you are on the ground, then you should have the the door open, and it should be possible to see the and the ram air turbine should be extended if you are making it building it in flight then i uh, i suppose that you're not going to uh, to do that unless you are doing it as a sort of landing pose because the ram air turbine was extended during landing all right other parts look very sim similar or familiar um this is actually a quite tricky part of, of uh, when you're putting the when you're putting the um, uh, fuselage together or the front part of the fuselage together to f fit this into this sort of clamshell that is the lower and the upper part of the fuselage uh, and you uh, also have to fit the the fronts of the um, air intakes or the air scopes quite uh, that is quite difficult if you want to re remove as much as possible of the seams that are on the side and on the inside of the air intake I didn't do a perfect job on, on the um, on my uh, fighter vegan uh, the AA-37 that I, I'm building. Uh, I uh, admit that. But uh, I couldn't spend uh, days in uh, filling and sanding that part. It, it uh, was too much work, I think. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, we have the uh, thrust reverser. And uh, in flight, you should... Um, Post them like this, and if you are standing still on the ground, then you should it should be like this. And this is, I guess, some kind of uh, when the thrust reverser is activated during a landing. All right. Apart from that, everything seems um, 
um, familiar and um, there is I see that there yeah everything seems okay <laughs> understand this is as I mentioned before you don't need that uh, ring that is used for lengthening the, the fuselage so uh, so you will only have to fit those parts two parts together okay here comes the part where you join the uh, fronts of the air intakes uh, as I said before it's a bit tricky um, here we have the clear parts for the navigation lights on the side of the wings or outside the, these are this thing these uh, things here that are protruding that is the radar warning receivers so outside those you will have to fit tiny wedged type of uh, clear part to that and uh, it's a very difficult way to get that to look good so I took one <laughs> when I did the uh, um, the fighter version I took one uh, some drastic approach and I just uh, removed all the seam lines and stuff on, on the inside and I just glued it onto the wing and then I soaked everything with CA glue and sanded down it so I got this the correct shape so it sort of integrated with the with the um, leading edge of the wing and uh, I, I got a pretty good result of I think with that okay so I see that there are a uh, different type of air scoops here uh, those uh, <coughs> parts here <coughs> sorry the J17 and J18 uh, these are not the one they are not used on the uh, on the fighter version and there is no gun port instead you have this uh, center uh, rail or pylon apart from that I think everything looks very familiar uh, here you these, these uh, odd shaped things here that are put on on the top of the of the fuselage, fuselage between the cockpits those are actually periscopes that are the instructor instructor is using them to to uh, to look in front of the aircraft because he, he doesn't see much from that position okay next up is the landing gears they are quite complicated for for a small aircraft or a smaller scale like this a lot of parts and they are in different metal tones and uh, so you can you can spend a lot of time with uh, adding details and uh, hyd hydraulic um, lines and stuff uh, but everything seems quite normal here nothing unexpected or that I think that I don't recognize from the fighter version and we have uh, the landing gear bay doors they fit in the canards and here are the air brakes I was talking about earlier okay and uh, this side this part of the instruction was actually missing in the in the first version of the uh, of the fighter version in Tarangus kit so they had they had a sort of addendum or errata that were added on the side um, so here's the ram air turbine and the canopies and then we are finished with the pitot tube okay so here are the a couple of um, of options and uh, oh here are actually they are mentioning the the resin uh, aftermarket that are include that are uh, supplied by CMK so here's the pilots that I was talking about 
and they have a detailed up uh, ram air turbine and an ejection seat and thrust reversers They look very similar to the one is in the kit, but I guess they have a little bit more detail. And also air brakes. Maybe these are fitting better. Let's hope that. Okay, so uh, the trainer version, most of them were in bare metal finish. So uh, you should be prepared to, <laughs> to do them like that. Or there seem to be some splinter... Uh, options and um, so that is actually a, um, a possibility as well I think that the paint callout is actually better on this uh, in this instruction if you compare it to the to the Tarangus kit it's more kind of easier to understand and here they are actually putting the the colors and the and the and the numbers for the colors in the in, in the paint scheme so so that's okay and here we have the splinter versions with uh, i noticed that the, the paint callouts are, are in uh, guns uh, um, aquas and uh, lacquer types so they are not uh, mentioning the um, Mr. Paint colors here um, and yeah it actually says guns send you here so they can, maybe they have some kind of collaboration on that all right so here we are the have the stencils uh, I think this is also very good and we have some marketing uh, stuff here with the uh, other releases from uh, from special hobby okay so that's the instructions for the for the trainer okay let's go through the spruce of the um, strike version as well I will not go into so much detail here because much of the much of the parts that you already use in the kit or we have already looked at. <clears throat> okay. So nothing really unfamiliar here. Everything looks like it's supposed to do. I'm not sure which one of the <laughs> of the coffee tabs you're supposed to use. I think this one, but And maybe that is for the for the fighter version. Okay. Next one. You will probably use this one. This is the fighter version, and that is the, the instructions instructor seat of the of the trainer so it's probably this one that you're you're going to use on on this kit apart from that i'm not sure which type of air scopes you're using on that we, we will look into that when we get to the assembly instructions <coughs> and uh, Okay, this was a little bit, I wasn't expecting to find that, because you're supposed to use the, yeah, the other ver version. Other version, I got it here. This one. Uh, this is this one, this uh, tail fin is the one that you're going to use on the, on the strike aircraft. We will not use that. Uh, apart from that, all parts are common and they look okay. The pitot tube uh, uh, made it made it through the trip as well. Uh, 
and we have the fuselage parts for the front and rear and the side. Uh, sorry, the, <laughs> the rear and the front underside and the and the rear upper side that is okay looking good and we have the top front fuselage here and everything looks like it should do I think you are using these ones but uh, let or yeah this was for the I think these are for the for the fighter version and these are for the for the strike version but we can uh, check that when we get to the to the assembly instructions okay nose cone same concept as for the other one so of course and we have the Main, underside of the main uh, wing, the double delta. And everything looks like it should be. Okay. And we have the clear parts. I don't know if it's any... Uh, we can open it up just for the sake of it. We are doing a review, aren't we? At least check for uh, imperfections or uh, any pro problems, but everything seems really, really nice. Everything is without scratches, and so that's uh, good. Okay, let's have a look at the assembly instructions for the strike version. Uh, there are some information on the. Uh, aircraft. This was the first aircraft that went into service, so uh, I guess there are some information about that. Uh, the Vigian was never exported, uh, they say mainly for political reasons, uh, but also, I mean, the, the Vigian was a quite specialized aircraft for. Uh, made for Sweden for for the defense uh, policy or um, uh, the uh, how the defense of Sweden was built up during the Cold War so uh, uh, it, it wasn't like a generic aircraft that could be uh, s sort of exported so that is probably also one of the reasons why why uh, we can we can never serviced uh, outside Sweden. Okay, enough of that. Let's carry on. Okay, we have the same layout here. Uh, we have the unused part crossed over and we have the paint uh, callouts in the same fashion with the uh, letters. And yeah, nothing uh, unfamiliar here. I think we have uh, covered this already. Um, I see that there are options depending on uh, the camo of which individual you are building. So uh, that is something that you probably need to to take uh, into consideration. Yeah, and I also see I actually missed this in the, the in the other one. But since uh, the strike version and the, and also the trainer, of course, have uh, the shorter fuselage, you actually need to cut uh, a little bit of, of this uh, dorsal um, uh, shroud or or cover, the center of the of the spine. On the aircraft, you need to cut a little piece there to to make it fit, because the, that part is made for the <laughs> fighter version, which is longer. Okay, so this is the same same, nothing 
changed here. Yeah. And um, I see that there are actually options here you have to consider with uh, also based on the individual you're building. So uh, that is the air intakes looks a little bit different depending on the type and also the the um, fin on the underside of the fuselage. Ven ventral fin I think it's called. Okay, apart from that we uh, we have the same layout. Seems that you are actually using the uh, pylons or on the <coughs> on the side of the fuselage, uh, which makes sense for a strike aircraft, because then you want to have the maxed uh, maxed out uh, loadout, of course. And you have the short tail fin. And apart from that, this is also the same as for um, for the other the other uh, individual. And yeah. Okay, so here we have the the different um, uh, paint callouts or different individual store. One in bare metal and two types of depending on I guess this is depending on how the what kind of parts you are putting in and so you have to you have to choose during the build which one of these will I build that's and here we have the a couple of resin upgrades parts and I see that they actually have the M4 M70 uh, rocket pod is uh, really cool. And here we have the, the paint callouts, same uh, same uh, concept as uh, the other one. And the stencils. And we have some advertising or marketing information about the other releases. So we have the decals. They come in a resealable bag as well. Which is uh, nice, I think, because uh, you might not build both aircrafts at the same time, and then you need to have some kind of protective um, protection around the the second half of the decal sheet that you are not using. As I said before, uh, both aircraft types are covered in this decal sheet, so. Um, I don't know if they are organized uh, left and right or if they are just mixed, but uh, I guess there are some. Hopefully they have <laughs> sort of collected one type to one side and uh, the other one. The thing that um, that I notice here, um, apart from the, the quality of the decals, which are very, very good, uh, they seem to be perfectly in register as far as I can see with my naked eye. Um, this is actually something that I was missing in the Tarangus kit and this you can see here over here that you have the, uh, decals for the instrument panel and that thing I think is a very nice uh, idea because uh, it's a little bit tricky to um, to paint uh, the instrument panel uh, and the side panels by hand since it's so small scale and there are not uh, as as far as I know there are no uh, aftermarket uh, photo edge panels available at least not right now 
so this is actually a very good uh, ID and a very good uh, contribution to the kit from Special Hobby okay so uh, I think this uh, looks very good. I have uh, high expectations th that the decaling process will uh, go smoothly since it is, ca it is cartograph uh, uh, decals. So um, I think this this looks really nice. Okay, so this is probably the moment that many of you have been waiting for. That we start looking at the book and uh, the book is uh, what I would call a coffee table book uh, sort of square type picture intensive a lot of design to it and uh, it's a really nice thing that you can have laying around on, on, uh, on your uh, on your bench or or a table at home okay <laughs> Let's move on. Um, there are see if there is, is a there is no table of contents, but um, let's go through side by side uh, and try to to get a sort of understanding what uh, what uh, the layout is. Okay, so here's some information about the Vigan aircraft itself with a lot of really, really nice pictures of the complete aircraft. And uh, this is really nice. Uh, I think. And there are different versions. I hope they that uh, special hobby or triangles are making uh, a re reconnaissance version as well, the SF. 37 that would be really cool so there's also <clears throat> attached to the picture some information if there are any detail what is the purpose of the detail and stuff like that Okay, so here's some nice close-up pictures of the canards. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, and we have some... This is the reconnaissance version. With the cameras and the viewports for the, for the lenses and so forth. It's really nice that they have... Uh, all the versions, I think, I hope that are, all the versions are covered. Um, but these are uh, really nice pictures and if you are going to scratch build stuff, this is golden. This is really, really good. Yeah, really nice pictures. Some of these pictures are difficult to uh, get hold of on, on the internet. You basically have to buy books to to uh, to get fo good footage of uh, of details and uh, yeah you can see the the black lining on the on the leading edges and that is also very often heavily shipped because of uh, yeah different kind of uh, objects that are hitting <laughs> i guess and uh, of course, um, okay, mm, yeah, here are the intakes. Um, really nice pictures. And the fuselage. Yeah, they have also mentioned the uh, the exhaust for the starter engine. <clears throat> and the ram air turbine. And these are two different uh, 
air scoops. Three with this. Yeah, some really nice close-up uh, pictures of the of the ram or the rat. And here are the navigation lights as I was talking about earlier uh, with the radar warning receivers. <coughs> there are red domes for those. And this is a really nice picture of the bare metal uh, version so you can see all the details and uh, shading and uh, variations in the in different panel lines and so, so on. Really nice. And here you have some really nicely weathered uh, splinter camo. Some information about the uh, double delta and canard configuration. Mm, really nice pictures here. Here's some information about the cockpit, the different versions, ejection seat, really nice close-up pictures. So here you have the safety, um, uh, what's it called? Safety handle. So this was folded in during when the pilot sits down. Then he folds in that in to the recession between the. The, um, the neck supports here uh, and that puts the ejection seat in sort of unsafe or uh, or uh, live uh, mode but if, if this is extended which is it is normally done <laughs> it normally is like this on, on the ground then this the chair is uh, is safe more pictures of the cockpit and here are some um, pictures of avionics and stuff. This is also so nice to have if you are going to scratch build parts or remove panels or stuff like that. Maybe that is not something that you do on a 172 scale kit, but if you are beginner building a larger scale, then this is great. So here are the uh, periscopes or uh, for the instructor on the trainer version and some really nice close-up pictures of the of the landing gear that's this is the nose landing gear and here we have the air brakes and you can see the rust tone or the amount of weathering you have to do on the all these, uh, it's really nice. The pictures are very, very good. These are perfect for uh, as a reference uh, material for for a model. Here are the rather complex main landing gears or the struts. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, stuff going on here, <laughs> and uh, it's. Uh, uh, Many of these parts are not included in the kit, you have to scratch build them if you want to, to add them to the at least the 172 scale version. More pictures of the main landing gear base, they are quite busy with lots of uh, hydraulic uh, uh, tubing and stuff. Yeah. More pictures. Really nice uh, staining here. <laughs> and here you have the different uh, um, tape fins. Here at the end you can see it on this picture, uh, 
make sure that I get it in shot. There's something round sticking out here. That is a rear-facing uh, radar warning receiver. It's actually not included in the kit, but it's very easy to uh, to scratch build one. I can can show you how I done that. Okay, so here are some pictures of the fighter version with the gun pod. And as you can see the air intakes for the for that looks a little bit different. And here we have a couple of I think quite rare shots of the avionics base and the service panels. Um, Wiggen had a quite unique concept with uh, um, sort of built-in self-testing and, uh, and support for troubleshooting and uh, uh, fault finding. And the reason for that was that the, the um, technicians that were servicing the Wiggen was actually conscripts, people that are, came from all over the country in all different uh, educational backgrounds and they were taught in a reasonably short time how to perform service and uh, maintenance on, on the Viggen and that is so there are no uh, uh, university guys with um, with high-tech uh, long training that for that is for to to service an aircraft like this it was actually done by people that were doing um, with, with far less education and, uh, and uh, background skills. Okay, so this is the RM8A. I think that is the... Volvo Fleet Motor version. Really nice pictures here of the thrust reverser as well. And some pylons and weapons stores. And this is really nice. This is um, Swedish Air Air Force Historic Flight. That is a uh, an association in, in Sweden that is um, that are maintaining old aircraft and, and keeping them uh, airworthy. And uh, here you can see the, uh, the flight display of uh, of all the aircraft they have. Okay. So uh, a rather quick uh, walkthrough of the book. I think this is really, really nice. And if uh, it's almost uh, a good reason just to buy the kit, just to get this book. But of course, I think you can buy this, uh, buy this uh, book standalone, so to speak. So that's that is another option if you don't want to invest uh, money in in both the kits and and everything together. Okay, guys, one final thing. I promised to show you the, the Viggen build I'm doing at the moment, the uh, fighter version. So here are the, um, uh, the issues I mentioned or how I fixed it, the, the problems with uh, the air brakes and they didn't fit. I actually had to pad them with, uh, with some plastic card to, to get around that. Uh, also, there are a couple of things worth mentioning. Um, here is the radar warning receiver I I was talking about earlier, and uh, also I had a lot of issues with fitting the two fuselage halves together, the, the clamshell I was mentioning before, and to fit it with uh, with the front of the. Um, of the air intake so that that takes a little bit of work to do but uh, it's it's not impossible
So, what is my impression of this kit? I think it's a fantastic offer from Special Hobby. You get uh, two aircrafts, two different types, uh, two full kits, uh, basically with uh, separate instruction books and um, you get a book with really really good reference material and you get uh, decals from Cartograph as well. So that is I think it's fantastic. It's a fantastic uh, offer, and uh, I'm really happy that I was able to get one copy myself. Uh, if it is a limited edition, and I can imagine that um, <clears throat> it will run out of stock pretty quick. So, um, so what more can you ask for? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, one thing. And that is uh, the as same as with the Tarangus kit. There are no missile rails or weapons in the kit. And I think that is uh, a little bit... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, definitely a hassle to get uh, aftermarket or scratch build missile rails. And you have to buy aftermarket weapons and try to fit them. And uh, all that. So it would be have been really really nice if they had included a sprue with uh, with the selected weapons for for the um, uh, at least for the uh, attack version or striker strike version of the aircraft trainer I don't know maybe it, I mean it's uh, it it's uh, uh, fully plausible that uh, the trainer aircraft didn't have any any <coughs> ordinance <coughs> oh, sorry uh, so uh, that but that is only the only downside uh, as I can see there are some small issues with uh, with the fitting and uh, that was with the Tarangus kit and I expected that it identical with uh, these kits like the, the, the fit issues with the air brakes and uh, around the air intake but uh, those are things that can be solved and uh, when they are solved you have a fantastic 172 scale vegan or in this case you have actually have two so uh, so well and I'm not uh, I don't normally recommend kits but in this case if you can get a hand of this uh, get your hands on this uh, don't hesitate just buy it that's <laughs> that's my advice okay so uh, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you soon on the channel goodbye